the Lord. Within the presence of the Lord, in whom the wisdom of the ages lie, for whom the raging of the sea subside in a living sacrifice he's the only source of life my hope is the Lord is my Lord and bless you. Hallelujah. Happy New Year. Amen. I'd like to say, boo devil, we're still standing. Amen. He's targeted us in many ways to try to destroy our path, but we're still here. I bring you greetings from a lot of places and, and especially home, my father and, and many others. And just, just before I, I came out, uh, Brother Donnie Reagan and Brother Tim Pruitt, and many, many want to say hello to you. You're not alone in this battle, and uh, we certainly love you with all of our hearts and are so honored to be here for you. And I, I uh, thank you for coming out on a stormy Friday evening, and some of your lights are out, but the light's not out here. Amen. We certainly love you with all of our hearts. I would certainly thrilled to have my wife with me, and, and uh, we were, she wasn't coming, and just yesterday we got her ticket, or two days ago we got a ticket, and she was able to come, and they worked it out. She sat right beside of me on every flight, and, and I just, for those that fly a bit, you know, that's supernatural within itself, and, and so we just are so thankful that she's here, and so we, we certainly love you with all of our hearts. And I too come with great expectation that God would just do some mighty things among us. Amen. If you will turn with me to Joshua chapter 1 this evening. I've just been burdened on my heart for about the last month to, to speak this weekend on courage. And after the songs I heard sung tonight, it just sounds like we're just right in tune, yes. right, on, right on target. And so the words that's been said over the last couple of weeks here, just, we just fall right into the channel. And, and we know God knows everything. Amen. <clears throat> Joshua chapter 1 and verse 5. I love it when God speaks to us. You know, it's, it's a whole lot different when our favorite preacher talks to us, but when God talks to us, it's a whole different thing. <clears throat> and he's always accurate. And, and the word is not so much time sensitive. It doesn't have an expiration date to it. And if he's talking to Joshua, he's also talking to you. Brother Branham's, these were words to Brother Branham as well. Yes. But they're not just words to Brother Branham, they're words to you. Amen. I would like, and maybe you've read this thousands of times, but I'd like for you this weekend to look at these words as, as though God is speaking to you. 
There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. That's enough to shout about the rest of the week. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from, the, from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Amen. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Hallelujah. How many would have a need this weekend that you'd just like to say, Brother Ron, I want to just bring this to Jesus now. And I'm just asking a supernatural God to, to wave across this building now. Almighty God, how we love you with all of our hearts. And we invite you to come and speak to our hearts. We have prayed and prepared ourselves and studied and laid aside time and you spoke to our hearts. But now, Lord Jesus, we ask you that you take charge of the, even the molecules of this room. Lord, I pray that you would take your word and place it to our hearts and may it go like a dart to the sinner part. Lord, and Lord, I ask you that not only as a speaker, but also hearers tonight, that we could get ourselves out of the way. Forgive us of our every mistake and our every humanity, Father. Lord, we look to you now. As we begin a new year, we look to you to give us the strength and you're our source of life, our source of strength and courage. And now we ask you, Father, that you touch our hearts. Bless this audience now, we pray. In Jesus Christ's name we ask. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated. It has certainly been an honor over the last, last while to be able to speak with you your pastor and, and, and Brother Tom as well and, and um, in meetings that have just been passed and, and it just seems to go so quickly. Yeah. It's been such an honor to stand with these great men and, and be with them and Milko, you included. We love you and we have so, such a great admiration and Brother Ed has been such a mentor to me and a, such a great strength to my life and, and uh, I just, I just, I, I don't have enough adequate words to say, and it would take me the rest of the evening to say how much that Brother Ed has meant to me through the years. And uh, you say, well, Brother Ron, get on with business. Well, <clears throat> you see, it was just about 10 or 12 years ago that I stood in a meeting here with you. And I begin to speak about in that meeting that Satan couldn't touch a hair of, his, of my head until he had went to my father and got permission to do so. And in a matter of a few weeks, I would be in a fire and now lay in a coma and doctors would give me up and, and I would aspirate in my lungs and, and those lungs would fill with infection and and, uh, and it was on the day, God in God's great orchestration, it was on the day, the very morning, 
to which that, that doctors would give me up and give me no more hope. It was that day that your pastor was in prayer and your Mount Baker camp that you were buying and purchasing and you've enjoyed these many years that I would be the speaker next year. I love it when God speaks. <clears throat> you know, we may have our critics. And we, but you know, anybody that's been successful is going to have critics. We may have our barkers and the, and our bloggers and our nonsense that goes on. But I'll take vindication over all of their nonsense. And I would like to stand here tonight and just once again say, because God dealt with your pastor to call my wife, my son was in one hospital and I was in the other, and I was in another world. And... Uh, and Sister Connie would listen to the doctors through that through the next few weeks, saying how much that they had give up and it was impossible. But God specializes in, in impossibilities. And not only that I would be at the meeting the next year, but I would be the speaker at that meeting the next year. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. Brother Tom and I spoke in Switzerland together and God just did incredible things there. And then we were, is it okay to, to, to speak a few things? And I didn't ask permission and generally I don't. <clears throat> and we were in the North Carolina Brother Joe Green's meetings who also send his greetings. And we were at Brother Joe's mission camp that Brother Biscoll has preached many times and Brother Tom and myself took that this year and and uh, I'd like to report to you that he did an awesome job and you should be proud of that. But on Wednesday night, we, we had the service and I was, I was speaking and, and I just said some things that, you know, if I, if I would be given my choice, I would, I would ask the Lord that he could hide me behind a curtain to which that, that, that I, you wouldn't even see the man or even the voice would be so that you couldn't tell it was myself. But, but God chose men to speak through. Gave us personalities and different quirks about ourselves to works that, that, you, that you can enjoy. We all enjoy squirrel hunting and stories of the hunting trips. We love that about our prophet and him telling us about his life. And, and as I was standing there, there that night, I was preaching and I said, if God could just use us behind a curtain as the service would go and you know, it just seemed like that, it just seemed like as the service would go, it seemed like that, 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 that you know, it wouldn't be a night for an altar, or it wouldn't be a night for, for a prayer line or anything like that. And as I finished, and you can go and listen to it if you would like, but I, as I finished, I, I just stepped off of the stage and my son and, and my deacon and Brother Joe's deacons would be taking me off of the stage and as we were leaving the stage, Brother Tim, as I, as I stepped past the curtain, and, and you've been there, and I passed, stepped past the curtain, and, and as I was walking to the office, I, I felt him. Is it okay if I just testify just a moment? Sometimes we think, well, it's just a, another service, or it's just another meeting that we came to. And I think we miss some things. That God comes to every service. And even sometimes even at the end of how things are beginning to operate, he's there to do a job. And he's called a meeting and he's got, a, he's got plans on his mind. You see, when God comes, he's got plans and he's got a mission. You're extremely important to him. And as I stepped past and I, I, I walked, I, I just turned and my son, my, I heard my son say, it's on now. And I turned and Brother Joe Green's daughter, a daughter-in-law and son was standing there. And the Lord just spoke some things to her. And that, after, after some things were spoken, Brother Tim just said, now you'll have your baby. 
And two weeks ago, they announced they're having a child. Then I stepped through and they prayed for another sister and then a then another brother and a young man, Brother Michael, you'll, where you're at. Brother Michael, you understand this. Brother Dwayne Jackson, whom you know. And, and I just took him by the hand and I said, you've, you've rejected the call for, for, for 17 years. And you need a real committal to God and committal to your purpose. And you understand those things. And I think he's preached 12 times <laughs> The best of my knowledge since that time. And he's quite a preacher. There stood Brother Guido. Brother Guido was standing there. And Brother Guido just, he just walked up and, was you there, Moko? Brother Guido was standing there. His son came to the Lord today. His son came to the Lord today. Just only a couple of hours ago came to the Lord. Brother Guido was standing there, and I just spoke a few things to him about things that was going on. And I said, Brother Guido, I see a train coming, and it's okay to get on. You don't, you don't know what you're saying. Just God just... Brother Joe's brother-in-law, his name is Terry. And I've known him for decades. He's a kind of a, he's a, kind of a good old boy. He, owns a, he owned the good old boy club. Sat in church and everybody loved him and everybody cared for him. And, but he just didn't know the Lord. You know, you can sit in church for years and not know the Lord. And so Brother Terry was standing there and, and he'd been the kind of friend to me that he had actually invited me one time to go hunting in his tree stand. Not just a tree stand, but listen, you know you've made it. His boys never got to hunt in his tree stand. And I sat in his tree stand a few years ago and sat and we had, we had a good time later. And, but Terry didn't know the Lord. He watched Brother Tom that night as those things begin to happen. And he told me, he said, I can serve a God like that. I can serve a God like that. <clears throat> I just grabbed him. I grabbed him and I hugged him and I began to pray with him. And Sister Betty, she took him by the hand as they walked out of the building. She said, we were married all of those years. And she said, I walked out of that building with a different man. To God be the glory. Two weeks later, he would, he would, they would discover something in his chest that he would have cancer. And just only a few weeks ago, I, I stood at his funeral. It was one of the largest funerals that I've ever conducted. And I could stand there and talk about eternal life. Yes, sir. Because only a few months ago, I was there when it happened. And it absolutely changed his life. Are you with me now? <clears throat> Sometimes it just takes courage to step from that, that realm of humanity. And to take God at his word. <clears throat> In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, forgive me for taking that time, but I kind of feel like it's going to be that kind of a weekend. He said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Every one of us have an adversary. The scripture mentions fear in the, in the scripture 600 times. So it's real. Yeah. Yeah. Satan's not a paper tiger. He's orchestrated. 
He's a tool in the hand of God. But I want to remind him here tonight that my God is infinite million times greater than he is. When Jesus would meet him in in Matthew chapter 4, and when the tempter came, verse 3, came to him and said, If thou be the Son of God, I wanted to share this with you this evening. Satan really didn't know if he was or not. And he was asking him about his position. Even though he had watched him have supernatural births. So the great critic came to Jesus himself and criticized his birth. And then began to question him of if thou be. Do you not think that Satan will come to you and question your supernatural birth? And question your stand and your position? And if it can only get you to disbelieve who you are and what you are. Command these stones to be made bread. And he answered and said, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And then the devil taking him up into into the holy city and set him upon a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. In their hands shall thou bear thee up, and lest thou at any time that thou should dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again the devil taking him up into an exceedingly high mountain, showing him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto him, All these things, notice this, all these things I give thee, If thou wilt fall down and worship me. And Jesus. And then saith Jesus unto them. Give thee these hints. For it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. And with him only shalt thou serve. And that then the devil left him. And behold he came. And angels came and ministered unto him. I want you to understand. As the prophet begins to share with us. He said, Jesus did not defeat him with power. He could have took his power. He did not defeat him with emotions. He defeated him with the word of God. And that's the reason every believer can stand here. I'm the least in the kingdom. Brother Branham said, the least going on their knees. The kingdom of hell shakes. The scripture says in James chapter 5, in 1 verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And but let patience have her perfect work. That ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Verse 12, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to give him, them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man that is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. When it is finished, it bringeth forth death. Courage. I wrote some words down and had some, actually, Andrew wrote me a little bit of a poem before coming here and I want to share a couple of these things and with you be strong and of good courage we're believers we're God's sons we fight brother Ken you're a historian 
of some sort of a sorts. And you know in the South, we're fighters. <laughs> My part of the country is Stonewall Jackson country. Stonewall Jackson said, I'm as safe on the battlefield as I am at home on my pillow. <clears throat> we don't back up. Nor do we back down. We fight. He shelters us under his wings. He fights our battles. He wins our wars. We cast Satan out with Holy Ghost boldness. He hath authorized us and empowered us to use the name of Jesus for any need at any time and we believe him. Taking him at his word by the authority and casting the Satan out. Reminding him of who we are. We have declared, we have been declared by God's vindicated prophet that we are an invincible army. Never be defeated. He wins our battles. He is our victory. Brother Branham said we've watched him as a healer. Now watch him as a warrior. If any bride is prepared, we are. I don't care what we face. It may hurt. It may sting. Future things, we don't know what we're going to have to face. But if God be for me, who can be against me? Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 8 said, And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. Neither will he forsake thee. Fear not. Neither be dismayed. Brother Branham says, when you, get, when you got the message, keep going. He said, say, I can't walk up again and I know I'm getting weak. Just keep going. Don't stop. Lay, lay it aside everything. Just keep threatening through, brother. You got a sword in your hand. Just keep chopping. He said, I went to a football stadium one time and was going to preach. And I stopped at the door and looked up and, and it said, it's not the size of the dog that's in the fight. It's the size of the fight that's in the dog. So that's what it means to win the battle. You say, well, look, look at all the great churches that are against this. I don't care what size they are. It's the fight that's in the dog. That's what counts. It's the faith in the individual. If you're a coward, get back to your little cuddle hole. I like how the Brother Branham said, if you're a coward, just get back to your little cuddle hole. If you're a soldier, stand out there and battle on. Right and wrong is engaged. Let's fight. We're not a bunch of sissy wimpy. This age may be full of sissy wimpy. We're not that. Like Peter Cartwright went into the city and said, Lord, the Lord told me to come here and have a revival. And he went to that old storeroom and got in there and began to clean it up and Big old bully of the town, the pistol hanging on his side, walked down, got doors, and some of them, what's the guy going to do down there? Well, he's a preacher. He's going to have a meeting. Said, well, guess I'll have to, have to go down there and throw him out in the street and run him out of there. That's all. We don't want no meetings around our place. So he goes down there and stomped the door and Peter Cartwright had his coat on, you know, and he was washing windows and walls and a little bitty fella. Listen, you can listen to Brother Branham tells and you can tell he's enjoying telling this story. <laughs> and the old preacher laughing at him, you know, for eating chicken with his hands, which is etiquette today, you know. And so he was washing windows and fixing around that big bully, walked there and pulled his coat back, his pistol hanging on his side and said, what are you doing? He said, uh, I'm washing windows. And 
And he just kept washing windows, you know, and he had one purpose. God told him to go hold a revival. Washing windows down. We don't allow revivals around here. He said, oh, but the Lord told me to. <laughs> he told me to have a revival. He just kept right on in his work. And he says, well, there's one thing that you'll have to understand. I run this town around here. Oh, you do. And he just kept washing windows. Before you have, have, a, have a revival, you have to whip me first. Well, I'll just do that next. <laughs> and he took off his coat. And he walked over there and reached by the collar and knocked him down on the floor and jumped up on top of him and said, I must fight if I should reign. Increase my courage, Lord. Pound the tar out of him. You got enough? Yay, he got up and shook his hand and he got saved that night. Peter Cartwright came from our part of the world. He was preaching in a meeting one night. It was a Wednesday night. And in the meeting, there was about 30 men walked in and wanted to shut the meeting down. And he just walked down there and began to try to usher them out. And one at a time, he whipped every one of them. Church was disturbed. Preachers was all disturbed. And, and they, they came back on Sunday and nobody felt the leading to preach after that kind of carousal happened, Peter Cartwright said, I will. And he stood up that morning and he preached a half an hour on the gates of hell shall not prevail. And the meeting went all day Sunday and all night Sunday night and all day Monday and all night Monday night and all day Tuesday and all night Tuesday night and on Wednesday they baptized about 300 people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Peter Cartwright was preaching and the Civil War was going on. And Ulysses S. Grant brought many of his soldiers to one of his meetings. And the pastor, the pastor was sitting behind Peter Cartwright as he was preaching. And I'm only in my preliminaries now, just hang with me. And he was preaching, and the pastor pulled on his coattail and he told him, he said, the general's in the building. And he said, I don't care who the general is. If he don't know Jesus Christ, he's on his way to hell. Amen. The next morning, Grant came to his door, knocked on his door. And he opened the door. And he said, you know, if I had men like you, I'd win this war so much quicker. That's hard for me to tell being from the South. <clears throat> we still fight in that war down there, you know. <clears throat> but let me just say, sometimes difficulty gets right in your face. You don't realize as a minister, sometimes what's going on behind the scene and the, the struggles that you're having just to walk to the pulpit. And you know within yourself you can't do anything. But we have an almighty God. Yeah. Brother Branham said, there you are. Take the word of God and cut your way through every doubt. If that's the next job, let's get it done. The next thing I'm going to do is get away from my doubts. Cut it down. That's my next job is to get away from all my frustrations away. If my senses tell me, well, you feel bad, the next thing to do is cut that thing away. Yes, Amen. I'd like to share this with you. Some words that just speak to me. I've been sick before, but I made it. I've been broke before, but I made it. I've been broken hearted before, but I made it. 
I've been betrayed, but I made it. I've been lied on, but I made it. I've been destitute, but I made it. I've been rejected, but I made it. I'd say Satan's starting to get a little nervous. Brother Branham would quote this. Must I be carried home to heaven on a flowery bed of ease? While others fought to win the prize and sail through bloody seas. I must fight if I must reign. Increase my courage, Lord. My father-in-law was Brother Homer Frazier. He was a unique individual. Your pastor was a dear friend of him. He was rough cut. He wasn't cultured. He definitely wasn't polished. And he was a real man of God. He baptized thousands in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He believed this message with everything that was within him. <laughs> and he preached. He preached like it was going to be his last service, no matter how, how young he was or how even how old he was. My father-in-law, his last service was sitting in a wheelchair with one leg gone. And I had pushed him in the wheelchair, helped him up into the, up into the church, and he would take pain pills and... and uh, I asked him, I said, you feel good enough to preach? And he said, absolutely. And we'd roll a desk in front of him and he'd sit there and take the microphone and he would preach. He defied every excuse. He defied every whimper of anybody that's ever had a whimper about not coming to church. He defied all of that. He broke every rule. I know we're not all built like that. But his last sermon was, Be ye therefore ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. That wasn't some dainty little sermon. He preached about an hour and 20 minutes from that wheelchair. And he told him, if you, if you, don't, if you don't get ready, you're going to get left behind. This is a war, and you got to fight in this war, and it's a battle. And he quoted, Brother Branham said, you're going to have to fight for every inch of ground. One day we were sitting in the back, and I looked at him, and, you know, after so much pain and so much agony and so many things and operations that he had went through, I looked over at him and I said, Homer, I want to tell you. It's right now that you're the most vicious. Because a wounded dog is, a, is the most dangerous dog. And a warrior that's got his entire lifetime behind him. I'm preaching to you now. A warrior that's got his entire lifetime behind of battles and victories and falling downs and getting up. And in spite of his humanity, he's still standing. Whether you know it or not, Satan, Ed Biscoll is more dangerous now. He's more dangerous now than he's ever been. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Be still and know that I'm God. I'm bigger than your problem. I'm bigger than your circumstance. I'm bigger than your situation. This is not your battle. You don't have to handle this. This is God's battle. God will work it out. 
All you have to do is be still and know that I am God. The man said, I I just want to talk for just a little while and just to build up a Christian faith. I find out that one of the greatest hindrances that the church has today is that they're scared to death. What are you scared about? That's what I'm wondering. If you'll just only realize who you are. You don't have to know who you are, but you, you don't know. You, you know who that is sitting beside of you. Oh, you say, yeah, that's my neighbor. I know, I know him all right. But he's a son of God. Adopted by Jesus Christ into the family. That's a daughter of God sitting next to you. And who are you? If you're a Christian believer... And you're a son and daughter of God. What are you scared about? No need of being scared. As long as the devil can keep you scared. That's all he wants to do. He's got you right then. Spiritual amnesia, not knowing who you are. But knowing who you are produces faith. And Jesus had perfect faith because he knew who he was in the word. Brother Branham said, as a son and daughter of God, you have more authority than the angels that are in heaven. Are you with me now? There's sometimes that we're visited by special angels to come to And even in certain meetings, people say, I saw the angel of the Lord when we were in China. People said they saw the angel of the Lord in that meeting. I was just in, I was just in Brother Tim Pruitt's, and there was a couple saw the angel of the Lord in that meeting. He's in every meeting. But whether you know this or not, you're more powerful than even that. I know you've heard this for decades, but sometimes you need to be reminded of it. You need to be reminded of it. In Switzerland, we go to, and we can see the, the great halls of where the, uh, all the leaders of the world come together. And they discuss peace and they call them incredible, powerful people that sit there. But I say sitting in this building is more power than it's what sits in your parliaments. Are you with me? Are you with me? Satan can't disturb your household until he first goes to God because there's a hedge about you. Psalms 91 tells you the angels are encamped about you. If you could only remember who you are. The scripture says that perfect love cast out all fear. Brother Bram said love and faith is the same thing. Love and perfect f- love cast out fear, which gives faith. The scripture says in uh, in Isaiah 54, which is one of my favorite scriptures, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. If Satan really realized what he was doing, he would never tempt you. He, he would never touch you. He would never let one of his imps, he would never let one of those spirits come to attack you because you're doing roll call on them. Every time they come against you, you will bring condemnation to them. Are you with me? Philippians 1 and verse 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work. Yes. 
And God finishes all of his programs. He finishes the work. He didn't just call you to just come and start and hang on. But he called you to finish the work. They asked Brother Branham, said, how do you feel, Brother Branham, when you stand there and see people coming in different languages and things, are, are you afraid? No, sir. No, sir. He said so. Right. Never been afraid yet. Because he told me so. And I believe it's the truth. Amen. Now notice these next words. If he told me to go to the presidential graveyard and raise up George Washington tomorrow morning, I'd invite the whole world. I'd invite the whole world to come and see it done. And I'd say bring and get every critic that you can and stand them around, you're going to see the glory of God. Set that chair over there where you can sit down and rest a little while. He'll be here in just a few moments. He said Jesus never cried when they brought that maniac. Boy to him and had epilepsy fallen into the fire. He never said, Father, I'm your son and now you sent me here to do so and so. Can I heal this boy? He never said, he never said that. He said, come out of him, Satan. He spoke and the boy was well. When he met Legion with 2,000 devils in him, it wasn't Jesus a crying and it was the devils that were crying. If you're going to cast us out, oh my, suffer us to go into that herd of swine. Jesus never said, now Father, am I able to do this? He said, come out of him. And the devils took their flight. Sure, he knew he was the Messiah. At the grave of Lazarus, he had been there dead four days and he said, if thou would have been here, Lord, he would have not have died. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Not where, when, or how. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He knew who he was. He knew what he was. He knew that he was Emmanuel. He knew that in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He seen them little people there. He had seen that what God had told him then to do. And there he was. And he went down there. He never said, now, now wait. I'll kneel down here. All of you kneel down and pray. And you believe. He said, you believe that I am able to do this? And he asked for it. It wasn't him. It was them, yea, Lord, I believe that you're the son of God that come into the world. Oh my, there he is identified. Something's got to happen. Lazarus. Let me just say, the resurrection's going to happen. And every blogger, and every web page, and all of their critics, won't matter then no way. The critic that hounds in your ear, pay no attention to him. Hallelujah. He spoke and the blind saw. The lame walked. The deaf heard. Devil screamed and come out. The dead was raised up in everything. 
Why, he didn't have to pray through. He was anointed the Messiah. He was that Messiah. He knew who he was. He knew his position. He knew what he was sent to do. He knew what the Father had identified him to be the Messiah, to be the believer. And when he met the believer with faith, he just spoke the word and devils scattered. Speak, don't cry, speak. He knew his God-given rights. We don't. He knew what he was. We don't. Moses forgot. Samson, others understood. Joshua understood. Moses forgot. God had called to his attention to it. He said, why are you calling out to me? I sent you to do the job. Speak. And go on to your objection. I told you to come to this mountain. Take them children and lead them on. Just speak. I don't care what's in your way. Move it out of the way. I give you authority to do it. You spoke fleas and flies and creation, all things like that. Now, what are you going to holler to me about? Why are you coming to me hollering these things? Just speak. Watch it move. That's all. Jesus, everything that he said, he just spoke the word and it was so. God properly had vindicated him to be his son. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Watch him. I like this. How bravely, how majestically he stood before his critics. Destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up. Not I hope. I'm going to try. I will do it. The same scripture that said he would raise up his body. Give us authority. Come on, help me preach now. Give us authority. Give us power. In the name of Jesus Christ, cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. This is not some dainty little gospel. This is not some social gospel. Hallelujah. People have come too late to tell me that this message don't work. You're way too late. This message has got everything that you need for life's journey. Hallelujah. You don't have to go to Barnes and Noble or some bookstore, Amazon, somewhere or another. Get a book, How to Be Successful. Apply your life to this word. Eat this book. Eat the book. Let it live. Jesus said unto him in Luke chapter 9 and verse 62, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom. Now, it may take a bit of courage for you to even gulp what I'm getting ready to say. But just stay with me a bit. Yes, sir. People that walk away don't have nothing to say. And I don't care what their name is. I may be five foot five, but I know where I'm standing. People that walk away don't have nothing to say. Something interesting about this message. You walk away because it has life, they fight it. It's got life. And this is the only place that life is at. The 
critic didn't stop Jesus. It didn't stop Brother Branham. It didn't stop your pastor. Now I don't want to bring it up to date. It won't stop you. Are you with me? I don't care what the doctor tells you. Sometimes when we talk about character, of, of, of courage, when we talk about courage, we, we think about a man named David. And he really wasn't concerned when he, when he walked off of the hill about what they would do at his funeral. Saul was backslidden and he had all kind of armor and he should have been the one fighting. I want you to remember Goliath could have stood there for years with that group of people. But where he got in trouble was he opened that mouth when David showed up. <laughs> and he, no doubt that morning, people that looked at him and thought he was such a great champion and watched him as he ate his dozen eggs that morning and his bacon and admired his great big muscles and he put on his, his sleeves and his chest and his armor and they admired what a phenomenal warrior he was. They didn't realize today was the last day that he was going to eat those eggs and eat that bacon and put on that armor. But today was going to be his last day of boasting. Satan, I want you to listen to this sermon. If anybody tunes in, I want Satan to listen to this sermon. I want to tell you, you're coming to the end of your road. Because David has showed up. What an awesome audience that you are. What an awesome ministry that you, you've had. That's challenged you night after night and day after day. Keep pressing on. No day is to take off. Keep pressing the battle. You knew that it was going to get darker. You knew that it was going to get more difficult. You knew this wasn't Hollywood. You knew that there was going to be challenges in your way. But something that was predestinated before the foundation of the world ignited in your heart. And it's not you holding on, but it's him holding on to you. You would have given up. You would have quit. You would have walked away. But that seed gene of life that God put there before the foundation of the world, nothing can stop it. The scripture tells us that they cut their heads off. It didn't stop them. They burned them at the stake. It didn't stop them. They fed them the lines and it didn't stop them. They beat him until he was totally unrecognizable as a human being. And he had the power to call 10,000 angels. He could have nodded or winked to one of the angels and they would have turned the world upside down. But because you and I would get sick. Because you and I would agonize in our mortality with sugar diabetes and breath and depression and, and all different kind of difficulties in our humanity. Because of us, he surrendered himself. And every stripe was whipping devils. I find it interesting. 
that people want to come up with all kind of nonsense about the little boy in Finland. But when Brother Branham said, if this little boy is not off of the ground in five minutes, you call me a false prophet. And then he made the quotation, you could line up every devil in hell. You could line up every devil in hell. And they couldn't stop it. But Lulu, the devil's a real believer. Because he was there. <laughs> he was there. He knows that was the truth. He knows that was the truth. He was there. As a matter of fact, he was in, he was in every one of those prayer lines. And he knew that just before Brother Branham was the angel of the Lord, the presence, and the pillar of fire was going all over the building. And he knew with all of those patients coming before him that that man didn't know them. He knew that. (laughs) And of the hundreds of thousands of times, (laughs) never wrong. And he told them things that, that they had forgot. And even laying on a, on a hospital operating table, right. and I, I see a tall, slender doctor and a, a little short, fatter man. And they've got your kidney in their hands. They didn't see that. They didn't see that. <laughs> this was more than a gift. It was more than a gift. Are you with me now? Listen, the devil knew. When our prophet would tell him, I defy you, Satan. You don't have the keys to your own house. And Satan knew that he knew that. You don't have no arrows for your own bow. And Satan knew that he didn't have arrows for his own bow. When the prophet told him, you have no legal authority. Are you with me? Sometimes you just got to square your shoulders back and look toe to toe at the enemy and tell him, I know who I am. But I also know who you are. You're defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to ask you, do you believe that? may be redundant, but I want to ask you again. Do you believe that? I want you to tell your neighbor, I believe that with all my heart. We was in a meeting in June at Brother Jason Jackson's. And just before I walked out, I preached that meeting with Brother Tim Pruitt. And just before I walked out, there was a, someone told us, said, there's a man here that's got stage four cancer and he's going to die if he don't get a miracle. He's going to die if he don't get a miracle. He had, he had his daughters with him and his wife. And I preached that evening as I preached, you know, you know yourself that you can't do anything. You can't do nothing. But you've got a word. And you're commissioned to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He had just told a man in Brother Jason's church that week, maybe even that day. He said, I've been to a lot of churches and none of them believe in divine healing. And he said, I'm looking for a church that believes it. And he drove, he drove hours to that meeting. And he sat and listened in that service. And as he sat there, as I stepped off of the stage that evening, 
Brother Frank McComas' wife, Sister Sheila, had suffered from sarcoidosis for years. We prayed for her, and God healed her. One after another, let me, let me just say, Brother Jason told me it was near 100 miracles happened that night. Brother Ken, I, I stepped in front of that man. I walked to his pew. I didn't know who he was. And I told, him, I told Brother Jason, I said, take me to him. And I walked to his pew. And we stepped out at the side of the pew. And, and he just told me, he said, the doctors have given me up. And I have no hope. And I'm just standing here. This is my last chance. Jesus met a lot of last chances. He met a lot of last chances. He met a lot of those characters. And I just asked him the question, do you believe? And we prayed for him. And literally, literally, he walked out of that building and he went to the doctor's appointment and they told him, said, something's wrong. You don't have one speck of cancer. Brother Ed and I just spoke at Brother Ray Erickson's only just a few years ago and together. I was there just a couple of months ago. And there was a man there. And, he, and they'd give him up to die with cancer. His name was uh, Coli. And he said, and, he, and he's sitting over there to the left. And he came up. He's first in the prayer line. And he said, if I don't get healed, I could, I could die in the next couple of weeks. He said when he got prayed for, he said it felt like a bolt of lightning hit him. He said he left the building with more energy than he had felt in years. He was standing in the parking lot in the rain the next morning. And he was standing there to meet Brother Ray Erickson. He said, it feels like that I ate, have drank 150 cups of coffee this morning. Are you with me? Are you with me? As we go into this weekend, let's just look at the devil. Let's just remind Saul. We've seen the dead raised. We've seen them come out of wheelchairs. We've seen cancers fall off. This message has got transforming power to take the worst drug addict, the worst prostitute, the worst religious devil in the world, and in a moment change their life to never go back. To never have to go into rehab. To never go back into those sins. Are you with me now? Hallelujah. We're not careful. We're looking for some socialized gospel. That is a, some mamby pamby. Some psychology. Of how to, how to overcome your devils. I'll tell you how to do it. Yes, sir. You don't have to counsel with a pastor for six weeks of how to overcome. Have an old-fashioned prayer meeting. Have an old-fashioned prayer meeting. And you get right with God. Take courage and go on your knees. And pull yourself up on the altar. And die out to those sins. But my pride of who I am, who cares who you are? General or president, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're dying and on your way to hell.
I was on my way to your place in China. And I was sitting on an airplane from Denver to here. And a man that was a musician, he's a great musician, he was sitting beside of me and he and his wife, they had just taken some cruises. Now they're on their way home. And he's sitting there. He said, you know, I've done got past my prime. He said, nobody knows me now. And he said, what do you do? I told him, and he said, I thought you were. We began to talk about great singers, great musicians. He said, you have to understand to be a great musician or a great singer in the world. He said, you have to give yourself to the darkness. Right. And he said, uh, the deeper you go into the darkness, the more anointed from that realm you become. And he said, that's why the Michael Jacksons and the, and he just began to name off some names. I didn't know them. But he said they kill themselves with drugs. And, and he said, because they can't live with themselves. He said they just can't live with themselves. He said, because of the darkness gets so dark. He said it just gets to the place. And he kind of paused. He said, but I would say you probably live in the opposite end of that spectrum. <laughs> and he said, the more you go into the light, the more anointed you become. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're children of the light. What a powerful people you are. What an awesome group that you are. Brother Ron, you don't know our trouble. Really? As the Lord was giving me the sermon, I thought of Ella. You know, to the naked eye, it looks like that in her life she's been brought much trouble. You and I roll out of our beds in the morning and don't struggle to walk across the floor. But she rolls out of her bed with much struggle. But it has developed an atmosphere around her that many of you will never get to walk in. So who's the real courageous one? Blind Fanny Crosby. Could have been one of the wealthiest women that ever lived as a songwriter. She had an incredible gift to be able to, to write songs that would even change history. Governments would actually attend some of those songs and they would embellish them. But she refused to sing for gospel, for the gospel to, to, to even civil war music. She refused to give her gift to the world. It took courage. It took courage for that blind woman living in poverty. When they would say, how will you know him? You've been blind all your life. How will you know him? Oh, I'll know him. I'll know him by the nail scars that are in his hands. 
She sat in a prison, listening to the minister speak that night, and they were asking her for months to write a song about coming to an altar call. An inspiration struck her in a meeting. And a man screamed, have mercy upon me. Savior, while you're passing by, don't pass me by. She would write a song that many of us would be sitting in pews. And ministers would challenge us to step from from the place where we're at. And more than just make a move for Christ. But to die to ourselves. And to lay our pride down. And say, I got a problem. Sometimes we think, why should we have an altar call? Why should we have a prayer line? Why should we do that? I think we need to get some courage about ourselves. This is our gospel. This is our message. Hallelujah. This is our word. And every benefit is in it is ours. Brother Branham said this, and let me just go, just, can you give me just a few more minutes? Brother Branham said, God's purpose can never be defeated. God's purpose can never be defeated. You don't know it, but you had a great impact on my life. You had a great impact. We were standing many years ago at a convention, a meeting, and you stood beside of me and told me your testimony of how you left that system and had to leave your wife behind. And you never looked back. It took courage. You see, I watch about every one of these services and I see you sitting here. And I see you sitting there. Oh, Brother Ron, but we just walk in and sit down in our pew. Really? When you walk in and sit down and you take your position and you remind the devil of who you are, And you sit down and you tell the devil, you will not defeat me. Well, Brother Ron, nobody knows my name. It doesn't matter. I don't sing and I don't preach. You're here. And if you could just recognize that every demon in hell has did his very best to stop you. And he has to go back and explain to his boss. I did everything to stop him. I did everything that I could to destroy his life, his home, his job, his health. I did everything to stop them. But Satan, what you don't realize is there's a seed. There's a seed that is inside of them. Brother Peter, I've never been to your church. Maybe someday I will. It doesn't matter if there's a thousand people sitting there. If there's ten there. The unseen, the unseen benches are full. 
Are you with me? And we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. And you may stand and preach the gospel and it feel like it just goes across the platform and literally falls off of the end. You walk out so dejected and so, you probably never do this, but you walk out and go, I didn't go nowhere this morning. And don't realize that thousands of devils have did their best to stop you from preaching. And you walk to the pulpit again and you took the word of God. Glory! Are you with me? God's purpose can never be defeated. Brother Ron, tell me something from the third pool. I just did. I just did. Give me something deep and give me something that will shake my world. Tell your neighbor God's purpose can never be defeated. Brother Branham said God challenged me to speak to those squirrels. Speak those squirrels. And I accepted his challenge. I want you to say this with authority now. God's purpose can never be defeated. I'm not trying to work you up. I'm not trying to work you up. He said, there's nothing that can defeat it. Ella, there's nothing can stop your miracle from happening. Nothing. Nothing. Brother Ron, but I'm in a hurry for it to happen. It'll be right on time. You don't have to make it happen. You just walk right into the promise of the word of God. You just keep taking steps. Are you with me? So how so happy we ought to be today. Resting upon the beautiful revelation of the word of the living God. That there's things neither present nor things that can come. There's no sickness, no sorrow, no death, no pearls, nothing, nothing. You know, it's easy for somebody to preach something that's never lived it. That's the reason a lot of people can't preach in the Holy Ghost. They don't know how it, what it is. Because you can't preach something that you don't have. But I've been there. Heart attacks, I've had them. Strokes, I've had them. Maybe this will just help you. I had a stroke and... I I couldn't stand to see light. I'd laid in the hospital eight days. And on the eighth day, during the night, I was there. And he came in the room. A nurse walked in and she had not been attending me before. Brother Sam, she walked to the side of my bed. And she's using a little flashlight, a little pen light. You know what that is, Michael, a little pen light. You know, you don't, you don't rest in a hospital whether you know that or not. But All right. She's using a little pen light. She said, Mr. Spencer, are you awake? And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I want to ask you a question. Was you praying? 
I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I've never been a Christian. But the others have told me about you. They're, they're taking care of you. And she said, when I walked in this room, I felt something I've never felt before in my life. And she said, I need Jesus. And I said, let's pray. And I prayed for her. Do you know that once I prayed for her, she'd give her heart to the Lord? All the symptoms I had left. You don't know what you've got to go through because God's got a purpose. I want to say this to you and forgive my irreverence, but Ella, Uh you've testified to people and showed them a power of God that you would have never, Mm -hmm. never, never. you'd have never got to testify to them of the power and the glory of Jesus Christ. Are you with me now? Let me just bring this to to somewhat of a climax for a moment. But the brand said, and now we are more than conquerors. We just walk right into it. As an inheritance, more than conquerors. We We are dealing with a defeated enemy. Sickness is defeated. Death is defeated. Hell is defeated. Everything is defeated. Brother Brown said, I wish I was about twice my size. Maybe I'd feel twice as good. He said, we are, we are disputing with a defeated, conquered enemy. Hallelujah. How many remember Dan Daisley? Yes, sir. Dan Daisley is a good, great friend of mine. He had a lot of influence in my life. I respected him because how tall he was. <laughs> and he was about as round as he was tall. And he had Coke bottle glasses. But he preached like he was 12 foot tall. I, I want to, as I come to an end, I want to share a story that he shared. He said one time there was a cat chasing a mouse. And this cat chased this mouse all over the house. All over the counters, all over the couch, all over the floor, everywhere. And finally that mouse ran into the wine bottle. Gurgle, 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 bubbles coming up. And he finally got to swim and he got himself up on the top of that wine bottle. And he said, where's that cat at now? So I flew, I flew on one airplane yesterday for six hours. Somewhere in God's great mind, he must think that preachers must need to sit on an airplane for a certain amount of time and, you know, put a computer in front of him. And the final note that I wrote for tonight was, where's that cat? (laughs) 
He's been chasing you for months. Now let me just talk to you because most of your family to me. He's been giving you difficulty. He's been whispering in your ears and screaming and he's been sending you all kind of trouble and, and shaking everything that can shake. So let's choose a meeting to fall in the wine bottle. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I've been, I've been preaching for a while now. Let me just say, the devil doesn't care how old you are, how much gray hair you have. What your situation is, he'll still fight. So you got to keep going back to the source. I don't care how much God's blessed you. I don't care how, how great that your name is. Let me just say this to you. Without God, we're just a breath of air. Thank you for coming out on a Friday night. But I want to tell you, young people to the oldest person in this building, take courage. Courage is under attack in this hour. It's absolutely under attack. But let me just say this to you. Read the book. It tells you who you are. And it's not some work up emotion. You are the sons and daughters of God. Brother Branham said, there's one person in the building that's looking for a revival. God will send that entire church a revival for that one person. He said, speak to your mountain. Slay the giants in your life. I want to say this to you. There's nothing impossible. Nothing impossible. Nothing, Sister Tracy, impossible. Absolutely nothing impossible. Problems? I've had a few. I've had a lot of victories. I've been with you with a lot of victories. Sometimes you might disappear for a little while. And you might feel like that you're the only one fighting. And then all of a sudden one of your comrades comes up out of a hole. And he's killed 800 people in that hole. That's scripture whether you knew that or not. So if you fall in a hole. Just go ahead and keep swinging the sword. Can I finish with this? Shamgar was standing there and he got whipped year after year after year after year. But his great, 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 great granddaddy was sitting outside of his tent and Melchizedek came and he fed him meat and gave him milk. And Melchizedek told him that thy seed shall possess the gates of their enemy. As long as Shamgar never recognized who he was, he would get whipped over and over and over again. But one day he looked around at his family and his wife and how wore out that she was and his children, how ragged that he was. And he realized who he was. The scripture said that one shall take a thousand. And because the devil is stupid, he only sent 600. (laughs) I did that for a reason. I know I'm unethical. 
But the stupid devil comes sometimes by the hundreds to your house. But you're given that you could kill a thousand. One day. Thousand tomorrow. Thousand the next day. How do you do it? One at a time. Yep. One at a time. You kill one, it gives you faith and confidence to get another one. And it gives you faith and confidence to get another one. Before long, 10 and 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 and 60. Glory to God. And then you come to church like a bee in the honey and you're dancing and you're shouting and you're praising the Lord and you're in victory and What happened to them? One at a time. One day at a time. One victory at a time. It's to him that overcometh. To him that overcometh. Not him that surviveth, but to him that overcomes. Not to him that quits and runs and fails and goes back. It's to him that keeps standing. I want to say this to you. We shall overcome. maybe a strange way to end it this evening I want you to go that man is talking about me he's talking about me can we bow our heads just a moment We'll begin again Sunday morning. I'd like to just ask you as you be very honest now. You've come to this meeting with a certain expectation. Not because of a man, but you've come because of God. And you'd like to just say, Brother Ron, I want to lift my hand before the Lord. I need him like I've never needed him before. I am desperate before God. I need him. I personally need him. Hallelujah. Everyone that raised your hands, I'd like for you to stand just now. No matter what country you're in, no matter what your situation is, sitting alone, dying of cancer, God's bigger than that cancer. I'm not going to live the next week if I don't get a help. God's bigger than that situation. He's bigger than that. Brother Ron, you don't know my relationships. Things have just destroyed my life. He's bigger than that. Brother Ron, it's been so long since I've had a revival in my heart personally. I'm ashamed. And I'm ashamed. I'm sorry. I went so far I, I didn't think I could get back.
Satan, you're a liar. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're a liar right now. Right now. Hallelujah. The greatest miracle that could happen in this building tonight is that filthy habit, you lay it down. Say, I'll not let it be a, make me a slave to it no more. I'll lay off makeup. I'll lay off worldlyism. I'll lay off pornography. I'll lay off all of those things. I'll lay it off. It takes courage to do that now. Almighty God. I'm ever amazed at your great power. Your very sovereignty to take a service and do different things with it. Lord, I've watched as you've dealt across this audience backward and forwards. Moved on this one and that one. Begin to deal with lives. Lord, just now, We could come to this altar. We could have a prayer line, but you're all over this building right now. Lord, you're the one that we're looking out to right now. I'm not looking to a man. We reach out to you. Touch the hem of your garment. Lord, our name don't even need to be called. But we know that we know that we know that you've walked by our pew this evening. Father, help us tonight, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, give us an unction of courage, an inspiration of courage like never before to step from the shadows of our lives. And to step from that darkness into the liberty of light. Give me that water that I'll never thirst again, Father. Change my life. Sound the Jubilee. Sound the Jubilee tonight, Father. Break every chain. I quote a prophet of God. He said, Satan, take your hands off of God's property. In the name of Jesus Christ, may that same supernatural God Break every perversion. Break every adulterous spirit. Break every unbelief. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you have to pummel us, pummel us, Father. Oh, God. Fill our lives with the Holy Ghost. like never before, Father. Lord, we commit this year. We don't know what this year holds for many great troubles, for many great victories. But may this year be a year of dedication and commitment like never before, Father. May this first weekend of the year Father, you're here. You're here tonight. And I don't say that by just a chance. You're in this building. Oh, God. Touch our hearts now. Soften us. 
soften us even now. No matter how long we've been soldiers in the kingdom of God, come by and saturate our lives. Minister to us. Lord, don't pass Ron Spencer by. I too have need. I too believe. As I just read it just a bit ago, I've been sick before, but I made it. I've been destitute before, but I made it. But I couldn't have made it without you. I can't even walk without you holding Holy Spirit, saturate across this building now. Touch this audience. Touch this people. Bless them now, I pray. Bless them now. Won't you just reach out to him where you're at now? Why don't you just reach out to him and say, Lord, may I be the miracle this weekend. May I be the miracle. 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 What about a revival for your church, Brother Peter? What about that revival? You've been praying for that. You've been praying for that. You've been been praying for your home. Hallelujah. Brother Lou, he knows your very heart's desire. He knows your very heart's desire. He knows how to open doors. Amen. He knows how to open doors that seem so, so locked and closed. He knows how to open those doors. Hallelujah. He knows how to penetrate walls. He knows how to go where no man can go. Oh, Spirit of God, move in our lives now. He knows how to bring prodigals home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He knows how to bring them home. He knows how to bring them home. Won't you just raise that loved one before you right now? Would you just raise it to the Lord? What seems absolutely impossible now? Why don't you, by the authority of the commission of the Word of God that you've been reminded tonight, Father, bring my brother home, bring my sister home, bring my mom and dad home, bring my son and daughter home. I don't care what it takes. I speak from courage tonight. I speak from courage. Why are we crying? Speak. Why are we crying? Speak to it. Speak to your mountain now. Ella, speak to it. You can't hold me. I speak in the name of the Lord. He can't hold me. Satan, you can't take our life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke the devil. And I claim victory with courage in my life. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Savior, one more time. Oh, Savior, my Savior, humble Me, wow. 